I've always felt myself to be an American. I'm an immigrant, actually. I was born in Peru, in Arequipa, Peru. And I came to the States when I was a year and a half old. My brother came to the States when he was 22 years old. My sisters were born here. My parents became naturalized citizens when I was 13 or 14 years old, I don't remember. But I do remember that when they became naturalized citizens, I was happy because I never felt Peruvian. I had always felt American my whole life. And when I turned 17, I decided to do the most American thing I, I could think of, which was to go to New York City because you know what they say, if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. And I went to New York and my parents helped me pay for tuition and I did my part by driving a taxi part-time, a yellow cab around New York. And I got to know the city really well. I drove night shift about three nights a week, sometimes four. And it's a really tough job, but, um, and you know, and I'm so glad I did it. I'd never do it again. It's a really tough job. <laughs> I mean, unless I had to, but, um, but I got to know the, know the city and, and I left New York, um, in 1991, 92, I don't remember exactly to come to, to come here to Japan. And, but I, but I left feeling a New Yorker and I felt like I had accomplished something. I had graduated, I'd gotten decent paying jobs, but I'd always wanted to come to Japan just to check it out for a year or so. But unfortunately or fortunately, I ended up falling in love with a girl and sticking out, a little, out here a lot longer than I ever intended. But that's another story. But in, uh, in 2001, on September 11th, I was celebrating my birthday, actually with a big group of students, about 40 students or so, when the terrorist attack happened. And at first, it was nothing. I got a phone call from a British friend of mine who told me, hey, you're American, you know, I thought I should call you and tell you that. Uh, there's been a small, uh, you know, accident and a small plane has run into one of the towers. And I thought, oh, well, that's terrible. And I got a call 20 minutes later telling me that another plane had run and it wasn't an accident. They're actually, it's actually being considered a terrorist attack. And I just now realize uh, that I'm wearing a Hawaiian shirt, which is really inappropriate for this kind of video, but it's too late. So please ignore that and accept that there is, uh, this is a serious video. But um, of course, as all of you know by now, a few minutes later, I got a call telling me that the tower, one of the, one of the towers had fallen. And I'm stuck in a birthday party with a bunch of drunk, happy people. And I feel so alone because no one understands how devastated I feel. And I really don't expect you to actually believe me or understand when I say this, but I was devastated. I was so fucked up. And I apologize for using the, the F word there, but, but there is really not a better word for it. I was screwed up. Well, well there is a better word, but... <laughs> But I want you to I want you to understand I was really messed up for a long time. Um, I think even up to a year I was just so depressed after this news. I just I fell into a hole of depression and it started with that night and that night was just a miserable night for me and I I let I, I had to get away from all those happy people and get to a place where where someone would understand. I went to a bar where other foreigners would, were gathering. I knew they would be there because they had cable television. <laughs> So we could watch the towers fall over and over again and try to figure out, try to make some sense of it. But, um, you know, years later, I've healed. I feel much better. You, now you see people making jokes about it. So I guess I'm not the only one. But um, but now I'm disgusted. I'm not, not so much disgusted. I'm saddened because I see 9-11. I see the terrorist attacks being used for political purpose that I just feel are so insincere. It's, it, I mean, um, Sarah Palin taking it under, using it, she's not even, she's not a New Yorker. She's, I mean, New, New York, by most of the people who, who are using this as a political weapon are people who would otherwise discard New York and push it to the side and claim it's not even part of America because it's full of liberal Jews, um, which is not true. It's only like 20% Jews. But anyway, no, just kidding. But anyway, <laughs> no, seriously, um, it's just disgusting for me to see this on television. And I just want to give you guys some information. I realize people are stupid. I mean, just to see how stupid people were, I thought about what's the stupidest thing I could think of, and that was putting a firecracker in my butt. And so I typed firecracker in your butt, and you can do this too. And there are 
literally dozens of videos of people putting firecrackers in their butts and that's a stupid thing to do. So I realize that I'm talking to a lot of possibly stupid people, the kind of people who put firecrackers in their butts. And if you're one of those people, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, hope that I, I reach you a little bit. But let me, let me lay some facts out for you. The building of the Islamic Center was put out in, was announced in December of 2009 on Fox Television. And it was condoned by Fox Television. In fact, it was applauded. Um... There is a chapel in the Pentagon where another one of the planes on the same day, you know, there was another uh, attack there. There's a chapel at the Pentagon where people have been praying for months, years maybe, um, and there's been no protest there. The place that everyone is bitching about, this so-called hallowed ground, is not actually at ground um, zero. It's actually a few blocks from it. And two blocks from it, is another mosque that actually predates the World Trade Center. So actually four blocks from the World Trade Center, there's already a real mosque. And this, and everyone is protesting about a place that's not even a mosque, it's a cultural center, which in the cultural center itself, they would have, they, they have planned out a memorial um, for the victims of 9-11. And you have to remember, some of those victims were Muslim. Some were Japanese. Some were, they were, everyone was affected by this. The whole world was full of New Yorkers on that day. Of course, Bush squandered that goodwill, but that's another story. Um, other facts to remember, other things to take into account. The fact you're protesting a building, uh, the, the building of a cultural center on a street where you already have an OTB. An off track. It's a, that's a betting center for, for horse races. And there's also like a, a semi-nude strip joint right next to that or a couple a couple of houses down i mean this is not such hallowed ground but more importantly than that you are spitting on the constitution you are spitting on the constitution by not by pro protesting this the look i'm not for muslims i don't like any religion to be honest i mean i've if anything christians have been the most over, overbearing you know sobs in my book in my life <laughs> Um, and I've met some great ones too, but there's some who've been really pains in my ass. Um, Muslims, from what I've seen, are also in general have been kind of uh, uh, not such an accepting group of people. But, but they're no worse than Christians. I got to tell you that. If anything, Jews, you know, they've never bugged me or or, or Buddhists. I've never been bugged by a Buddhist or anything or Shintoist or anything. But anyway, but if you love America like I love America then you have to stand up and let Muslims build their cultural center wherever the hell they want to. Um, and you have to admit the other, th the other points in this, in this conversation. I want, you know, America is about freedom of speech. And I once heard a very, it was actually from the West Wing, but I, I got to tell you, I agree with it. You know, I, I wouldn't advise that you burn the American flag, but you should definitely protect everyone's right to do it. Because that is the American way. And if you guys don't see that, then you're, you're kind of missing out on the message. And at, at first I was disgusted by the stupidity of this. And, and the fact that, it, that this issue is being used as a, as a political weapon against Obama. Who, you really don't need weapons you don't need more ammunition i mean the guy he, he, there's a lot you can argue against him but you don't have to come up with bullshit like this but now i'm just saddened by the whole thing and i think those of you protesting the mosque you should all be ashamed of yourselves and that's all i gotta say